So, uh, as Kenji said, uh, my name is Richard Scott and I am a lecturer in film and broadcasting at Ayrshire College. And I started experimenting with ChatGPT, I think it was about the end of December. And since then, I've got into the sort of habit of creating lesson plans. And what this lecture is essentially going to be about, or this lesson, this uh, demonstration, is about how to create um, lesson plans and some of the little tips I've learned along the way. So with that said, um, I'll get into it. Any questions, feel free to shout out. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, I won't take up too much of your time, but um, I'm going to switch into the lecture now. Um, hopefully, can everyone see that presentation? Is that on the screen? Yes, it is. Excellent. Fantastic. OK, so um, as I just said, uh, this is called the Lesson Plan Factory, and it's about how we've been using a uh, chat GPT to uh, generate um, a lessons. Um, so, just a very, very brief introduction to myself. Um, my name is Richard Scott, and I am a lecturer in film and broadcasting at Ayrshire College, and I'm currently also doing my MA at Falmouth University. If you have any questions about what we cover here, um, you can email me at richard.scott.ayrshire.ac.uk. Um, this is essentially going to be an illustration of how we've been using ChatGPT to create lesson plans and how you might do so yourself as well, and some of the little hiccups um, we've learned along the way. Um, but in I was a bit embarrassed when Kenji asked me to do this because ultimately um, I felt a bit silly about a saying like this is what we've been doing when essentially what I've been doing is typing things into a, a, a search engine essentially. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the context and how we got lecturers excited about using ChatGPT through lesson plans as well. I think that's what the kids call a little bit of added value and that's what I'm uh, aiming to provide by doing so. So as I mentioned earlier, my uh, experience using ChatGPT started around December 2022. Um, I was really impressed with the results and also quite scared by them. Initially, I was um, typing in silly things like um, who would win in a fight between Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson? Um, who killed JFK? <laughs> and uh, what happens if I die without finding out who killed JFK? Um, so things like that, just silly things. And then one day I was, um, had the Goonies on in the background while I was working and I just typed into it, can you write me an 800 word essay on the Goonies and the themes contained within it. And what came back was what kind of started to make me think this is a big deal, essentially, which was an 800 word essay, which was probably as strong or not, if not stronger than what our students would hand in. So after that experience, I was really desperate to tell other lecturers about it and what my experience had been like. I, I felt like it was something we needed to be aware of at the very least, um, with an expectancy that a that people would be using it and that we should at least know about it. Um, but a nobody really seemed to care <laughs> that much. Um, it wasn't really something that people were taking on board. Um, so people were relatively disinterested. A and I was showing them novelty things and how it could do, like it could write a song in the style of Bob Dylan about a member of staff, et cetera, et cetera. But no one really looked at it beyond the novelty. That is until one day a lecturer came in who required a lesson plan made quickly. Um, and while he was talking about it, I just typed it in. Um, it was a really straightforward thing I typed in. I just wrote, can you write me a lesson plan for a tour or class on stop animation? Um, and the results came back and... Everyone was pretty impressed by it. He, that lecturer immediately asked me to send them a copy of what it had done um, and used it in class. And that was really the beginning of it. And what I realized then was that in order to get people excited about ChatGPT and using it and, and, and taking it on board, um, one of the things that was key was not to present it as another thing that we have to worry about. Um, I'm sure like uh, myself and everyone else, there's so many things that we have to worry about, so many changes, et cetera, et cetera, that to have something that could be a solution to your problems rather than a thing that you have to be concerned about was really sort of um, groundbreaking in terms of uh, our staff room. So um, what happened after that was a flurry of requests for lesson plans to be made. Um, it was kind of a, a novelty of the thing that even though people could sign and do it for free themselves, they kept asking myself to generate them because I was already logged in, I guess. Um, and that was kind of it for a little while, maybe a couple of days. Everyone was really impressed with it. We were generating lesson plans. We were looking at them and considering, you know, how good they were. But as you know, um, time stands still for no man. And uh, very quickly, uh, people began to find cracks in the lesson plans. Um, they started to see problems with it and started to worry about, not wonder, worry about, wonder about um, how it could be improved. So some of the, the problems we noticed early doors were required resources that we didn't have, like it might 
If we were making one for photography, it might ask for a specific type of light that we don't have access to. Um, in filming, it might suggest a bit of technology, again, that we didn't have. Uh, lessons would be pitched too high and too low um, and uh, too specific or not specific enough. These were some of the things that we identified very early doors that were problems. Uh, and this was compounded often by the fact that I was making uh, lessons for classes that I didn't really know about, like so art history, for example, might be one. <laughs> um, so a bit of a philistine that way, I'm afraid, very much a modern uh, media. Um, so I wasn't catching them when it when it was making them. Uh, but very soon we realized that this was not an issue with the software itself or our, our chat, a chat GPT. It was an issue with the prompts. It was what we were doing. Um, and that is what we set about trying to solve and fix. And our suggested solution uh, is fairly straightforward um, using an old classic Microsoft Word, um, but we made a prompt template. And this was to ensure that all the information you required for your lesson would go into the system and thus you'd get a much more accurate and more engaging and hopefully more useful lesson plan at, at the other side. The goal with making the, the, the prompt template was to make something that retained the speed of using ChatGPT. I'm sure that's why we all love it, that you can get answers very, very quickly, but also eliminating some of those issues that I just mentioned on the other side um, slide. The document is a simple to use, um, fairly straightforward. As you can see, it's just a, a Word document with some cells in it. Um, and the information require a, a the information hopefully makes the information a, a, a elicits hopefully makes the the lesson plans much more um accessible and useful um includes sections for things like subject level resource objectives um and it's a copy and paste job so once you actually fill this in um you just copy and paste it into chat gpt and it should generate a lesson plan i was a little bit nervous about a uh, trying to use chat gpt um while live on air, but do you know what? I'm going to give it a go just to show you what I mean. So nothing risked, nothing gained. So I'm just going to come out and go into my desktop for a second. Um, and I'll just very quickly show you how it works. So although the cells are there to help you um, a, fill in the document in a sort of clean, relatively accessible way, so you can see this is what I made. Here's one I made earlier um, for basic video editing. And it just covers things like subject level, what week it is, the learning objective, class duration, nature of the work. Is it a practical class? Is it a theory class? What are you trying to get? Things that were key to making them more useful were things like identifying what resources you had going in. So I've said here 10 MacBooks. We have more than that. But again, for the purpose of this, I thought it'd be useful. And what software I'd be using, the number of students in class, any learning difficulties um, and other information. So that's for things like if it's a, a specific editing brief in this case, I would put in what maybe they're going to be working on. So hopefully ChatGPT will consider that. And then I also ask it to please consider this is the this box seems to never really change for me personally. It's please consider the number of laptops versus the number of students. So when it's making the lesson plan, it's considering what resources we have versus how many a students are in the classroom and how they they um a, how we can best work it to to, to make that meet that need. At the bottom here, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but um, there's a further inf information section that includes like a, if you need a handout required or a, a PowerPoint, um, which we'll cover that in a little second. But once you fill this in, all you do is copy it um, and uh, paste it in. So we're just going to try that now, assuming this is going to work. Hang on. There we go. Don't worry, I'm not going to read through the lesson plan, <laughs> plan once it's a, once I've done this. I just got it, want to show it quickly working and how, how it looks in chat GPT. So I've got a chat GPT window open here. And once you paste it, it takes away all those boxes and you're left with something that looks like that. Um, again, the world speeds up all the time, doesn't it? But rather than having people type in, can you make me the lesson plan for the following? We just have that on the form. So you can just copy and paste that as well. And then you just tap it, a return, and hopefully, if ChatGPT is not too busy, um, it will generate a lesson plan around this um, this structure. Um, I'm going to give it another couple of seconds, and then I'm going to assume it's too busy. But this does work, I promise you. Never lets me down, ChatGPT. Thank God. <laughs> So you can see here that it's it's just it'll look like much like I'm sure if you made a lesson plan before in some ways it'll look very similar but it's already put things in like this is about Premiere Pro which is one of the softwares that I said we had access to 
Uh, I have the expectations that as this fills out, it'll also identify workarounds for students with learning difficulties. It will have identified the fishermen, a, a, a day in the life of the fishermen footage is what we'll be working with. It should hopefully also have asked at some point for you to split the class into groups of two to, to make up for the fact that we only have enough laptops to deal with. Um, a, with ten, we only have 10 laptops, so we've got 20 students. We're going to have to have two students per laptop. So it's going to fill out all that information. And I have found personally that using this form, although it's a little bit longer than typing in, can you make me a lesson plan for um, basic video editing, a, I'm getting something that's far more useful as a result. So it's kind of a split the difference deal. You, you're going to spend a little bit more time um, with your template, um, but the quality of the work you're going to get back is much more useful as a result. And you've got a lot less fixes. I'm sure uh, if you've been using the software that you sometimes find yourself in negotiations with it saying, oh, I quite like that bit, but can you change that bit? And sort of back and forth, back and forth. And I felt like that was starting to take up more time than actually just making the lesson plan itself. So with this system, you just type into the Word document, copy and paste it in, and hopefully you should have something fairly um, useful to yourself. Um, okay, right. So I think that's that's enough in terms of showing you on the screen. Uh, I'm sure you can get, get the drift of what I'm talking about from this. Uh, the other little bit, which kind of came a wee bit later, was... One second, just got to jump back into the PowerPoint. Um, a was the handout and PowerPoint prompt. So what I found at early doors as well was that often when it makes a lesson plan, ChatGPT will say provide students with a handout um, to support their learning. And sometimes that handout is, a, if you ask ChatGPT just to generate the handout directly, it will um, be a little bit vague or else sometimes it will feel more like it's a handout for the lecturer rather than the students. So again, just another little prompt here, which is can you create a student handout which supports a uh, the, uh, the above lesson so we'll do it directly after you've made the lesson plan and in the other information box just put in anything specifically you want to appear in that lesson plan so in this case here I had identified that I wanted the breakdown of the Premiere Pro interface and the key windows and a cut a tools in it and Premiere will a uh, chat, chat GPT will generate a lesson plan specifically um around that as well which is really really good and then the final one I know not everyone's a massive fan of PowerPoint I am I remain one I like to have one in class. So if you're like me, you can also build a PowerPoint to support your lesson plan off the back of it as well. So another little prompt here says, can you suggest a PowerPoint structure, including slide titles and bullet points to support the lesson plan above? And again, there's a little any other information box, which um, you can uh, get more information from uh, as well. Uh, so again, if you want to be more specific or you want to ask it for specific things. Doing this while a little bit a little bit longer than just typing into ChatGPT, I think significantly increases the um, the quality and the value of the content you're creating. Um, and I guess one of the concerns that might be about this is that, and this is one that I kind of I, I do worry about myself, which is the idea that you could get stuff that's maybe a little bit generic, or you know, the idea that everyone who's doing media across the whole of Scotland or the UK or even the world is doing the exact same lesson because they've all had lesson plans made on Chat GPT was something that I was a little bit concerned about. Um, but that kind of um went away uh, as a sort of result of just something um fun. A I'm not going to name names, but I've got a friend who works in a primary school and he shows X-Men, the animated series from the 90s. It's a, it's a great cartoon if you've not seen it before, a, in class occasionally. And it's it's led to a joke amongst my friends that, uh, that he's always showing it. That's what they're doing in class is uh, watching X-Men. Um, and as a joke, I made a lesson plan for X-Men, the animated series. Now, I did not expect anything a, really of quality to come out of it because not only are you specifying to chat GBT, that you're using the X-Men to teach a lesson. You're also saying, you know, the 90s animated cartoon. Um, but I just filled in the lesson plan structure that I had used before, uh, that I just showed you. And um, we were really impressed with the results and we saw the potential value of ChatGPT off the back of it. It came back with the idea of teaching about diversity and inclusion through using the X-Men by showing an episode of the animated series, it gave us a particular title of the episode. And it also suggested we use trading cards as we're comic book geeks. We had access to that in that case. Um, and we were able to use that. And I, I only go by what I'm told because I wasn't in the actual class. Um, but apparently it was received very well. And that kind of reassured me about a lot of things that I worry about eh, with regards to ChatGPT, that this can still be a 
tool for creativity. And as somebody with, um, you know, a ADHD and stuff like that, sometimes I don't like structure, but it, it really benefits me. So having a tool that can actually speed up um, some of the drier stuff, but still give you that structure to be creative, I think um, enables you to do your best and most creative work. Um, so a little bit of structure goes a long way, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so a, in conclusion, a chat GPT is a perfect tool for generating lessons. And um, that said, the, a, the, specific, the specificity of your prompts really matters. And it's a case of rubbish in, rubbish out. If we just willy nilly say to people, you know, use chat GPT to generate lectures and people will benefit from it a, across, across um, you know, the teaching a realm, but they won't a, necessarily be putting in the most um, detailed of work if you're not familiar with a chat GPT or you're not as internet savvy or tech savvy as other people, you're just going to ask it for the basic thing, which again was something I was doing right at the very beginning. Um, so I think it's really worthwhile building a structure to support um, what you ask it to deliver. So rubbish in, rubbish out is kind of um, the motto. I guess if you put something bad in it, it's going to come back with something weak. Um, I recommend establishing a generic template, which establishes key requirements. And you can use the lesson plan as a springboard to generate other learning materials, such as handouts and lesson plans. I, I thought it would take a little bit longer than um, 10 minutes. So I haven't bothered putting this in. But one of the other things that I've done with it is um, put in essentially an SQA descriptor and ask it to build a 16 week plan off the back of that. And it's been able to do that as well. But I think that might be a discussion for another time. And with that said, a, <laughs> I, that's thank you very much for watching. And a, if you've got and listening, sorry. And if you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to a, field them. So the, there, there have been a few questions um, in, in the chat. Um, I could let people just ask them themselves, I suspect. Um, there was an interesting question, though, from, I think, Raymond, around the leveling of your template and where you make a reference to a college student or a first year college student. And yeah, he was asking whether that would be confused with the kind of American usage of the term, where it would typically mean a first year of a university students. That's a that's kind of an interesting one because I, I often think that myself, um, that maybe the chat GPT is thinking about American college as such, it's not really became an issue for um uh, for ourselves the lessons that i've got back by saying a first year college student the quality of the, the the lesson plan is such that um that i found it's always been applicable um i might say if i was working for an nq or a schools class i might you know put in the age range rather than the, the than the class or i might say hnc i've never actually done that so i don't know if it works and accepts british um, terminology but I, I would suspect that Raymond's right that that college term might be mistaken for American. It's just that, um, in my experience, it's always been applicable and usable um, for what we've required. Carolyn asks, um, based on feedback, did you find that chat GPT worked better for generating lesson plans for some subject areas than others? Well, that's a good question. Most of the stuff that I've been making has been in the creative industries, um, obviously, because it's really just... You know, it's not been like a, despite the term lesson plan factor, it's really just been the people in the staff room that have had access to myself and, and, and have been part of it. Um, I think more technical areas sometimes requires more specificity. So if you're working, I'm going to use photography again as an example, if you're working with different types of lights, um, if you have certain cameras, um, again, like Premiere Pro and editing, stuff like that, more specific the specificity will get you further. Um, at the moment as well, there's little things that I have been auto-correcting. I'm going to use a, an editing example here because obviously a, at the time where I was doing a lot of these experiments, ChatGPT wasn't entirely up to date. So there were certain things it was making reference to in Premiere Pro, for example, which were a little bit out of date. But because I know the software, I was able to work around them and operate um, essentially in a way that it didn't really bother me. Um, but a... I would say that more technical areas require more detail in order to get something satisfactory. Does that answer the question? Is that okay? Uh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this so well. I, I feel we, we have to ask at least a few more. So um, there's a question in the room here. Um, did you did you get any resistance from a, well, we know it as a quality team where they were to be things or your ICT team? 
Um, no, um, a, our ICT team has been very a, helpful with regards to um, ChatGPT. As, as I mentioned at the start of the, the presentation, I was probably one of the people who were a little bit more cynical about it to begin with. Um, not because I didn't think it was impressive. I found it incredibly impressive, a, but purely because I think there are questions to be asked about um, you know, the idea of the uniformity or the potential uniformity of such a thing in groupthink, essentially. And I was quite relieved the other day to see uh, the head of ChatGPT saying that he has concerns too and everything has to be done in, in such a manner. But no, I, our ICT team have been uh, incredibly useful. One of the things early on was, as I say, it wasn't necessarily thinking about it as a tool to be used by us, was I was thinking that student work could come in on this and we wouldn't know. And I, I briefly reached out to our ICT team and they um a, they got back to me saying a, tell me that turn it in we're working on uh, potential alternatives that there there is an AI identifier online it's available for free it's not perfect but it's there so our team were pretty responsive and I think they're actually quite excited about the potential of AI the strangest thing that I found right at the very beginning wasn't so much about you know tech savvy people quote unquote or or anything like that it was very much. <laughs> If you're already a busy person and something new comes along, you don't necessarily see the value in it and immediately. And that goes beyond teachers. Like I showed this to um, a, my fiance, I was showing it to my friends, I was showing it to my parents, and no one seemed to really grasp it. I think one of the things, and I'm sure if you've all used ChatGPT, you've had this experience is when you sit down in front of it and you type something in yourself, something maybe a little bit trickier, something you know, a little bit more interesting and it comes back and then you suddenly have that epiphany and you realize the potential depth of it. And you almost in that moment realize what it means going forward and how things have changed. And that was the strangest part of this whole experience was that those early days using ChatGPT, I was going into class and I was sitting there and I genuinely couldn't focus because people were working away and I felt like the world had changed overnight and no one had realized um, but no, sorry, to answer your question again, the ICT team have been fantastic at, uh, and I've not seen any resistance so far. At first. Um, we have another question in the room. Sorry, you I'm going to, yeah, I've asked this probably to everybody and apologies because I have got colleagues that are on this and I'm sure they're going to ask me about this lesson plan. So this is why I'm going to ask it. Um, I have been speaking a lot about privacy um, and obviously looking at um, online about the privacy policy that's relating to JackGPT. Obviously, it can share your data third party or use it for research. Um, yeah. Some people saying um, it will use IP, browser type settings, and data interactions. How have you managed to discuss this with your institution, and how is that being worked on with your ICT data protection and information security policy? Because it's something that I'm going to have to. I know when I get back, I'm going to have loads of emails because I have got people sitting on this just now. Um, but it, it's, it's to try and share that information and what we can use and how we can do it safely as well. Because people are saying, just don't use it. Um, don't put sensitive information in, you know, because um, it can be kept and regurgitated. And previously, a CV was used as an example of what not to do. But it's things like that you're saying about lesson plans. Those plans will be out elsewhere. So it, it's just like if you get any learnings or anything, you could share a nugget, perhaps. Well, um, I, I have to say that I've not had large uh, or long conversations with um, IT or anyone or digital integration with regards to the sort of ramifications of those aspects that I completely share your concerns with them. I, despite being quite into technology, I also have a lot of concerns with our own technology. Um, you won't be able to see because it's uh, out of focus, but I've got a lot of books by Jared Lanier and such people on in the back there about the, the overreach of such things. Um, from my own um, point of view, what I have tried to do as much as possible is keep the information that I put in as, as generic as possible. Um, in cases like there's a little bit in a, that lesson plan for our students with a, learning difficulties and such of the like, obviously I would never put in a name or, or that kind of thing. Um, I think in this case, because just it's the nature of the beast, I guess, with, with, with online and, and data collection, a, that it's what you put in, I think, because ultimately I think this is going to overtake. And if the tool is good enough, people will look the other way, I think, I fear, with regards to data protection. I'm sorry that's not a great grand answer, but um 
it is kind of where 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 I am at. I, I just personally try and be careful with what I put in. The same if I do with social media or any kind of internet tool. Um, but I completely share your concerns, and I would be eager to see um a, any information on such a thing because it is a concern. I think that ChatGPT may use that information. Uh, not necessarily not for evil as such but certainly not for a uh, necessarily the best of the the user well richard um that takes us up uh, just to the end of that session look i i really have to thank you for your session.